This podcast provides an overview of mitosis. The next several slides come from the Alberts textbook. What we show here on the left would be intraphase and then M phase. Now, this is just exaggerated showing the M phase and simply so the artist could get all the labels in. You know, of course, that intraphase is the longest part of the cell cycle and M phase or the division phase is the shorter phase of the cell cycle. During intraphase, the cell increases in size, DNA of the chromosomes is replicated, and importantly, the centrosome is duplicated. And that's what's being shown here. At prophase, the replicated chromosomes each are going to consist of two closely associated sister chromatids condense. This condensation of chromosomes depends on phosphorylation of histone H1 and on phosphorylation of molecules called condensins and cohesins. And you would have talked about histones, condensins, and cohesins in biochemistry. Outside of the nucleus, the mitotic spindle is going to begin to assemble between the centrosomes, which have replicated and have begun to move apart. This assembly of the spindles depends on phosphorylation of microtubular associated proteins at the microtubular organizing center. Prometaphase starts abruptly with a breakdown of the nuclear envelope, and that breakdown occurs because of phosphorylation of nucleolamins. And you may remember there are three groups of nucleolamins, lamin A, lamin B, and lamin C, and these are on the inner face of the nuclear envelope. They help to hold the nuclear envelope integrity together, and they also may serve as attachment sites for chromosomes during intraphase, not only for DNA replication, but for transcriptional activity. At any point, once the nuclear envelope is broken down, chromosomes can now attach to spindle microtubules by their kinetochores, and they'll begin to undergo very active movement. In humans, progression from prophase through prometaphase is under the control of cyclin B CDK1. This is the so-called mitotic cyclin cyclin dependent kinase, or in historic terms, it's human MPF. I just want to remind you that centriole replication is synchronized in the cell cycle such that each replicated pair of centrioles is going to elaborate microtubules for the mitotic spindle under the influence of cyclin B CDK1. And in this part of the diagram, you can see that the spindles have replicated and they're beginning to move apart in early prophase and in prophase so that by the time the nuclear envelope is broken down, the spindle is forming at metaphase and the centrioles are on opposite poles of where the nucleus would be. In animal cells, of course, we see the distinct centriole pairs. We know that plant cells don't have centrioles, yet they undergo mitosis perfectly well. So the spindle fibers originate from the microtubular organizing center in the plant cells, even though they're not well-defined centrioles. At metaphase, the chromosomes are aligned at the equator of the spindle midway between the spindle poles. The paired kinetochore microtubules on each side of the chromosome attach to opposite spindle poles. And then at anaphase, the paired chromatids are synchronously separated. Each is pulled slowly towards the spindle pole that it faces. The kinetochore microtubules get shorter, and the spindle poles are also pushed apart. And so pulling of the chromosomes on the spindle and pushing the spindle poles apart both contribute to chromosome separation. During telophase, the two sets of daughter chromosomes arrive at the poles of the spindle. A new nuclear envelope is going to reassemble around each chromosome set, completing the formation of two nuclei and marking the end of mitosis. The division of the cytoplasm begins with the assembly of the contractile ring. During cytokinesis in an animal cell, the cytoplasm is divided in two by the contractile ring, and the 
contractile ring consists of actin and myosin and as you know that pinches the cell into two daughter cells. As the cell has divided there's going to be the reformation of the interphase array of microtubules and those microtubules are going to be assembled by nucleation at the microtubular organizing center which is of course the centrosome and that's going to be occurring now in each daughter cell. The images that I've shown on the side, like these images, or if I go back a couple of slides, these images, these are time-lapse micro cinematography images, stills from time-lapse, and they were just showing cell division in an amphibian. And so it's just showing that in this particular amphibian, the entire mitotic time took 362 minutes. One thing I do want to remind you of during the M phase of the cell cycle, the microtubular cytoskeleton is dramatically altered, and that's going to, of course, get reestablished once the chromosomes have divided and the nuclei have divided. We understand there are three classes of microtubules. There are astral microtubules that radiate from the microtubular organizing center, and they radiate out towards the cortical cytoskeleton. And that's what would be shown like this or like this. There are polar microtubules that emanate from the centriole and they find microtubules that are emanating from the opposite centriole and the little black circles that are shown here are meant to represent microtubule motors and these microtubule motors play an important role in movement of the spindle and then of course there are kinetochore microtubules that emanate from the centrioles and attach onto the kinetochore core in the chromosomes. Movement of chromosomes results from an interplay of spindle microtubules and microtubular motor proteins and from spindle microtubules and cytoskeleton actin fibers. This micrograph just shows the spindle poles. You can actually see a cross section and a longitudinal section of one of the pairs of centrioles and you can see the microtubules going towards the kinetochores on the chromosomes unless you think that it's only one microtubule going to each kinetochore it's clear there are multiple microtubules attaching to each kinetochore on each chromosome at anaphase a chromosomes are pulled polewood there's a shortening of kinetochore microtubules. The forces generated at the kinetochores move the daughter chromosomes toward the spindle poles. So at anaphase A, the daughter chromosomes are pulled towards opposite poles as the kinetochore microtubules depolymerize. And this is a little bit counterintuitive because what happens is these kinetochore microtubules in prometaphase are going in and out. They're polymerizing, depolymerizing very rapidly, trying to find their target, their target being the kinetochore of the chromosome. Once they hit that target kinetochore, they get stabilized. The chromosomes move to the opposite poles as the spindles depolymerize, and they're depolymerizing at the kinetochore. So they're getting shorter. As they get shorter, the chromosome moves towards the spindle pole. At anaphase B, the spindle poles are pushed apart due to elongation and sliding of polar microtubules past each other. And these are with kinesin motors that are moving in opposite directions on the microtubules. And they're also pulled apart as the astral microtubules interact with the cortical cytoskeleton. So at anaphase B, there's a pushing of the spindle poles apart and there's a pulling of the spindle poles apart.